I also want to give a um, um, word of thanks that um, Eric Richards is with us today because um, you just decided you wanted to have a heart attack and get attention, Eric, and um, uh, you you texted me afterwards. And uh, can you tell us a bit about that? I'm just so grateful that you're that yeah. you're alive and that you're back in the saddle. So, Eric, I want to give you an opportunity to give an update. I and uh, Marvin, you're next after Eric, but I I just uh, I'm just grateful to have uh, Eric here, especially. Um, this Wednesday will be four weeks. So August 3rd, um, I went to work like any other day and was having a bit of chest pains all day. I thought nothing of it because I have two ribs on my left side that broke 20 years ago and they've never fully healed. So I thought I was just having my regular pain I've been having. Um, as the day went on, the pain got a little bit worse. Um, I am a male, so therefore I am stubborn and I refuse to go to hospital. Even though my wife texted me every five minutes afternoon and told me to go. Um, by 4.30, the boss let us go home from work. And by five o'clock, I was getting in the hospital in Brockville. <laughs> Excuse me. By seven o'clock, I was in an ambulance heading to Kingston. And they admitted me in because it went from a small minor heart attack to if I hadn't been there within the hour, I would have been dead. Um, thank you, Carl, for saying that. You're glad I'm here because when I was on the operating table having a stent put in, the main artery that supplies your whole body with, with blood was 99% plus. Mm -hmm. So I, uh, I basically threw in the white towel and said, you know what, I'm done, let me go home. I've had a good journey, so I'm done. Four hours later, the doctor showed up at my bed and said, well, I guess it's not your time. Hmm. So they sent me home on Friday the 5th. Um, I'm getting very uh, bored. No work for a month. I uh, can't drive until Friday or Wednesday. I'll be allowed to drive again for the first time which every time I look out my window and I see my poor car there and I know I cannot drive it, I gotta call my mother to come and pick me up, take me wherever I need to go. Um, it, it's funny because that Thursday I was supposed to be on the prayer group with Carl. And believe it or not, I even tried to get on from my hospital bed. Um, it would not let me. The Wi-Fi was not strong enough in that part of the hospital to allow me to go on video. So I ended up talking to Carl after I got out. And uh, yeah, I am here. Um, I refuse to give up on my music. Uh, they told me to take two weeks off of playing. I think I took about two and a half hours off. <laughs> at the length of time to get from home, the hospital to home that I was playing guitar that night. I just have to be careful how much I play and how heavy I play even today. If I play something that has a lot of chord changes or really fast, I get worn out very easily. Mm -hmm. So, and before anybody asks, no, I'm not that old. I'm only 49, so. You're still yeah. young. Very young, and it, it <laughs> came as a surprise to even the hospital that my, my family doctor took one look at the file and said, I can't understand because two weeks before, 
I had a perfect clean health except for my rib and that, but basically nothing that was going to give any indication that I would have had a heart attack. We're glad you're alive, Eric, and um, we're thankful and we will, uh, we will be remembering you for your recovery and that uh, your first drive will, uh, don't, don't drive wild and crazy, just take it easy, okay? Well, it just so happens the first day I'm allowed to drive is also my wife's and my third anniversary. So, yeah, I think, we're, I think we're going to disappear and go out of town for the night or something just to get away from everybody. Okay. Thanks so much, Eric. Okay. Um, so is there anyone else that needs to needs to leave and would like to speak up? want to give you the freedom to do that and if you bob if you have to get going or any one of you just uh uh we're just glad that you're that you've been able to be part of this i'm not cutting this off yet we've still got technically about 45 more minutes so if i stop lathering it means it gives you more time who would be next well my mine will be actually very short um Obviously, for the last month, I haven't done anything uh, at all. Um, I'm still working on my ministry, the uh, Honor Ministries. I'm still doing worship music. And this must, well, we've still gone. Um, I arrived. I got out of the hospital on the 5th, and on the 8th, we actually had a Christmas meeting. Obviously, I did not do very much. Um, there were about 19 or 20 people showed up, and every single one of them stepped in and get the set up, get the tear down, whatever. Um, I did play music that night. I played guitar for four songs. And by the end of the third song, I was starting to get tired out. Thankfully, the fourth one was a very small two-verse song, and that was it. Um, as far as ministry goes, we all know that you're not allowed to be inside and outside at the same time. Um, the doors have been opening a lot for indoor work for me but I don't want the indoor work. No insult to any of you to do it. Um, my way of looking is if everybody goes inside, who's outside to help? And I want to be that guy that's there on the outside so when they come out, they have somebody to come to. So mm -hmm. That's where Christmas comes in and that's where Honor Ministries comes in. Now, I did send Bob Logan an email, and I know he got it. He responded nicely. Um, I have a couple of ideas that I want to work on that I can minister to the inside people without being inside. I know that sounds a little weird. Um, one I'm trying to work on, we still haven't figured out whether or not it's even anywhere near possible, is taking the min taking the worship side of things and standing off of the ground. So you're on the outside of the fence, being set up with music, playing for the inmates on the inside. Um don't know if they would still classify that as indoor ministry. So that's something I'm working on. That's something I'm not pushing in the last month, but I'm hoping it won't be this summer and I am not standing outside at 40 below zero trying to play a guitar. No way. Um, huh. So it's something I might be yeah. happy. It's something I might work on for next summer if there was some way of getting around the legality side of it. 
obviously I would have to talk to people like Bob Logan, uh, Carl Wake, and I've talked a bit about it, and uh, we'll see where God has me going. So I know God did not want me to come home yet, so obviously he's got something planned. And as Jeremiah 29, 11 says, he's got a plan. So, yeah. and it should be a good thing. Thanks so much, Eric. No problem. Okay.